Negotiations for cash buyers at car dealers. It doesn't matter if you're shopping new or used cars. If you have cash, you're in the driver's seat, but don't give up all your leverage by talking about cash too soon. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's amazing video is brought to you by The Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts to boot. Today, we're hitting negotiation techniques for cash buyers and how to walk away with a great cash deal. Many people misunderstand how the business model works in a typical car dealership, and that misunderstanding costs them thousands of dollars without realizing it. You're in luck. We're bringing in one of our toughest negotiators on the Homework Guy team to help you out today. You've seen her before on 11 Fake Fees roleplay video, and many commented, she's the boss. You're right about that. She's one of the sharpest, toughest car buyers any dealer will ever see. She's well-researched, knows her stuff, and proves every day that a woman can be every bit as tough or even tougher than any man when it comes to buying a car. You just have to be firm, stay on mission, and you'll get what you want. If you're thankful the Homework Guy team is in the business of helping car buyers navigate the tricky process of buying a car with our great videos, and you want to support our efforts while there are plenty of ways for you to get on board, and show us a little appreciation. Believe me when I say we aren't making a ton of friends in the car business by helping you guys. I want to open today by reading a couple of viewer comments that illustrate the importance of today's video. This viewer writes, just bought a new car two months ago and was upfront from the beginning that I'd be doing a trade-in plus cash. Bad idea to tell them that up front. They told me that they could offer a discount if I chose to finance because the bank was offering them a deal that they'd kick back to me. Basically, the same thing as charging extra for a cash deal, just worded more nicely. In retrospect, they had a pretty slick operation. It didn't occur to me that they made all their money on financing, though. I assumed it would be all the extended service plan, windshield, chip protection, tire care, etc. Basically junk. Well, here's what the viewer hasn't completely understood. It's not simply the financing that dealers make all their money on, the loan produces some revenue, that's true. But more importantly, it opens the door to all the fees and product sales the dealer wants to heap onto your car deal. Loans are like a magician's coat. They can hide tons of things in there. When you're a cash buyer, it's much tougher to fool you, which is why the car price negotiations go south quickly the moment you say you're paying cash, like this next viewer experienced. Creative Crafts writes, Thank you so much. I just wish I had seen this before we went to buy a truck last week. Guys, research before going car shopping. We saw a used truck listed online at a local dealer for seventeen seven. Now remember that number. And so we went down to test drive it, look it over, and decided we liked it and were going to buy it. When we said we would like to put a deposit down on it pending a safety inspection report, the salesman says, well, we have to agree on the total price of the vehicle, and he asked how we would be paying for it. We answered, cash. Don't do this, you guys. We follow him into the building, and he says, I got to get my finance office to drop the full purchase price, and then comes back with a bill for 22 k Remember that 17 7 advertised price? We were shocked. We said, why is the truck now 22 k And his response was, well, it's always been 22 k No integrity whatsoever. We were scrambling for our phones and trying to pull up the ads that were on two different sites, Auto Trader and their dealership page, and sure enough, they changed the price of the truck. Needless to say, we just know now to always screenshot the advertised prices of a vehicle. Well, I hope you also know now that you shouldn't tell them you're paying cash right up front in the deal. They quickly got on their website and the feed for Auto Trader and jacked up the price of the truck by $4,300. These lawless thugs that do this kind of stuff need to be kicked out of the car business. Now, if you're a cash buyer, you might ask, how much do dealers really make on their financing fees and all the products they expect to pack into your car deal? If you took a loan from them? Well, the answer was right there in black and white. The dealer marked up the price of the car by $4,300 to a cash buyer. Think about it. Interestingly, it's right in the ballpark of the money a person leaves on the table when they agree to a loan in a car dealership. Did you see that? They aren't even trying to hide it. $4,300 extra to a cash buyer. 
This dealership is simply a den of thieves, and they openly and willingly violated consumer protection laws to do what they did, but they got away with it. If the consumer sends us the name of the dealer before this video goes live, we'll share it. If we get it later, it'll be in the comment section down below. These kinds of dealers really tick us off, and they ought to tick you off and every honest dealer out there who is just trying to make a living. Thugs like this need to be gone. All right, let's bring in our tough negotiator. She's one of the longtime members of the homework guy team, but she likes to remain anonymous, so we'll call her Elizabeth, all right? This gal got straight A's back in high school. Later in college, she graduated Agrija cum laude, a distinction that is given to someone graduating with a 4.0 in multiple degree studies and an honor that is added to very few diplomas acknowledging outstanding and exceptional work. Well, she's both outstanding and exceptional. Let me say this, though. It takes more than intelligence to accomplish something like this. It takes the willingness to do the homework and then going out to attack a given problem being fully informed. Sharp as attack. Elizabeth knows every turn or trick the sales guy will attempt and any move the finance man is going to make and then beats both of them to the punch. As viewers said after seeing her on a recent video, she's the boss. Well, this is the ace negotiator you get to learn from today. Elizabeth started her car shopping a while ago and has all of her homework done. She knows exactly where she's going with this and is now out on the showroom floor. She's a cash buyer and is going to face a question many of you do. She skillfully handles it just the way you need to. Okay, so that narrows it down to the Ford F-150. It's a great choice. Yes, I think so too, and I do like trucks. Okay, so how do you plan to pay? How do I plan to pay? We haven't even negotiated the price yet. We'll get to that, don't worry, but we need to know how you plan to pay so we can get started. That doesn't make any sense. I never talk about payment options until two things are in place. First, do you have the vehicle I want to buy? Okay, we've covered that base. I like the truck. And secondly, is it a price I'm actually willing to pay? We haven't established that yet, so there's no reason for me to give consideration to payment options when I don't even know if I'm going to buy your vehicle. That's pointless. We've always done it this way. It's kind of our policy. I get in trouble with my boss if I don't know how you're paying. Well, your boss wants the cart in front of the horse, and that's wrong. I get that's important to you guys, but today you got the wrong customer here for that. If you don't have the vehicle I want at a price I'm willing to pay, talking about payment is pointless. You and I both know that. Okay, look, I'll be interested in what the finance office has to say, but only after we negotiate the price of the truck, and that's assuming you come up with the final price I'm willing to pay. When I agree to the price and I have it all in writing in front of me, that's when I talk about finance. I know, but we have all Hey, okay, but I'm not a fan of mysteries. When I have the final price on paper in my hand, I might decide to buy it. And if I do, then I'll talk to your finance office about payment. I don't discuss finances on the showroom floor, and I'm not about to fill out forms regarding finance till I'm sitting down in a confidential office with a finance officer. If your dealership doesn't respect my right to data privacy, I'm happy to take my business elsewhere. Okay, come on back. Come on in, Elizabeth. Ben tells me you got a Ford F-150. Great choice. That's one of my favorite trucks, too. Yeah, thank you. All right. So I understand you have your finance options open. So I put together a few recommendations here that I have based on what most customers do. And if you have any questions, well, feel free to interrupt and ask at any point. Okay. I'm going to interrupt right now because um, I'd like to start at a different point. I have the price of the truck here from Ben. Before I came into the dealership, I was in contact with the local DMV office about tax, title, and license fees. Um, I'd like you to look up the total of those fees in the vehicle and give that to me. Well, well, we'll definitely get to that. I think it's a good idea that we make sure that your investment is protected first. That's exactly the path I'm on, protecting my investments. So I'd like to start with the tax, title, and license fees for the truck. Okay, let's see here. Um, taxes are around 2400 and uh, title and license fees around 600 But those are estimates. I would like the exact numbers, please, like the information I got if I call the DMV myself. Well, they're very close. Then that's not close enough. I want the exact numbers. Okay. Um, tax, let's see, is 230503. Title and license fees are going to be 
481.26. Okay. Um, see, that's $94.77 less than I thought and $118 less in state fees. So that's $213.71 still in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to my recommendations. But wait, not yet. I've totaled the price of the truck, the 33650, the 230503, 41126, and that's a grand total of 36,436.29. Check it yourself. Uh, the math checks out with me. Uh, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm assuming you want a document fee. Right. Every dealer does, okay, even if you're already being paid to register my vehicle with the state. How am I already being paid? That's the reason you have a retail price and not a private party price, because that's one of your services you provide, is the registration of the vehicle. I could stop by the DMV office on my way home and get this done in 15 minutes. Well, I'll add $75 just to be nice. If you're going to click the couple of keys that it takes to notify the state, I'll, you know, I'll pay you that much. Okay, I, I can't charge you less than five ninety nine a document fee because that's what we charge all of our customers. Sure, but your other customers aren't aware they're paying twice for the same thing. I am, and I'm only going to give you $75 just to be nice, like I said. You know, there are state laws that prevent us from doing that. We have to charge everyone the same. I knew you'd say that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the price of my truck um, from 33650 to 33126 since your fee is $524 more than I'm willing to pay. This allows you to show your $599 fee on the contract for the state, but I'm still only paying you $75 because I took the excess fee out of the truck. I, I can't just do that. Your offer is a little bit unreasonable, you have to admit. Hey, let's not kid ourselves. You know the moment your salesman told you I wasn't going to give payment information before I got the price of the truck negotiated, that I was a little different from your normal customer. So this isn't my first rodeo, but you're, you're the finance manager. You change the numbers all the time to make up the deals you want. You and I both know that a 599 fee is a profit pattern for the dealership. I've already agreed to the price on the truck. I'm not just going to let you round it up 599 just because you want to get paid more. I'm going to change the numbers, but I have to say I'm getting myself in a little bit of trouble doing this. Well, it's nothing you're not capable of handling. All right, time's a little short. Um, let's keep it moving. The new total is 33, I'm sorry, 36,475.39, everything. Right. Okay, I'm going to write you a check for uh, 20,475.39 and leave the balance of 16,000. Okay. And that portion you're considering financing? Uh, sure, I'd consider financing the 16,000 that's left, but... That depends on what kind of interest rate you come up it with. What's the term you're looking for? Um, 24 months. What do you got? What's your best shot at 24 months? Okay. So we'll fill out this form right here, and uh, I'll do my best. Okay, there we go. 2.49% uh, at 24 months puts you at uh, 684.10 a month at 24 months, just like you asked. Okay, 2.49. I actually already have 1.9% from my own bank, so I think I'll just have to pass on it. If you'll just, um, I'll just write the check for the remaining balance. How about that? And we can be done with this. I gotta go. All right. All right. It's been nice doing business with you, and uh, I'll make sure I refer my family and my friends. Are they all as tough as you? <laughs> Plan on it. We watch the homework guy videos. Boom. There you have it. 
how to negotiate a cash deal and play your cash card at just the right moment. Wasn't this awesome? Well, let's recap. The lesson here is this. Don't let the salesman push you around back in the beginning or you'll shut down negotiations before you even get started. Be firm, just like you saw here today from Elizabeth, and let them know you'll be interested in what the finance office has to say. But only after you've negotiated a price you're willing to pay. Remember she said that? Don't say anything about cash if you're a cash buyer. Secondly, once you get into finance, stay in control. Don't let them run you through a lengthy dog and pony show on stuff you're not going to buy anyway. Play it just as Elizabeth did here today and keep your aces in your sleeve until the right moment. In the end, you can outmaneuver them and walk away with a good, clean cash deal you wanted. Third, as you saw today from Elizabeth, she wasn't a clueless car buyer. She knows her stuff. Do your homework. Be ready for their curveballs and stay on top of where the car deal is going. If you let it get out of hand, watch the dollars just start flying out of your hand. If you'd like to see Elizabeth in action negotiating car prices, that's another subject, let us know in the comment section down below. If you appreciated the video that you saw here today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the Homer guy and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on many other social media sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We use your tips to sponsor great causes like Maggie. This amazing young lady is making a huge difference in the lives of university students, inspiring them to get more out of what they do. We enthusiastically sponsor her mission, and Maggie thanks you in advance, just like the Homework Guy channel. Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip today, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. You can help us get to a million subscribers. Right on. And by doing so, you're helping to defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who are still trying to figure out that good old fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care, everyone.